What up, everybody? It's your boy, Rich Michaels, and we're back with another episode of WOTR. But this time, it's not a remix. We're going to do a Rich Talks. In this episode, we are going to be discussing should wrestling or pro wrestling be unionized and should fan seating be pushed back at least 20 feet? Now, this is going to be a two-part, maybe three-part episode kind of docu-series or whatever you want to call it okay let's just say that bottom line is going to be more than one episode of this topic okay uh so for right now let's jump into the topic of should pro wrestling be unionized well i'm gonna start by saying i think so but what's the definition of a union in a workplace well, according to youngworks.org, a union is an organized group of workers who come together to make decisions about the conditions of their workplace. And a union protects and supports an individual with fair treatment in a workplace and provides benefits of protection of minimum wage, social security payments, overtime pay, and the ability to join a health and safety committee, and etc. and etc. and etc. Now, all that is payable with a membership to the union. And under US and Canadian law, all ages can join a union. So as we know, there are many wrestling companies all around the world, but we're just gonna focus on North America, primarily the US, then Mexico, and then Canada, and so forth. Okay, so are there any pro wrestling companies in here or in North America that are unionized? And the answer is yes, but it's not what you think. W okay, hold up, wait a minute. Let me go in some correct some shit. Uh, this guy, or this guy, I don't know where he is, is about to tell you some wrong information or confusing information. And I only notice it upon reviewing and editing the footage. So now, let me correct myself and simplify the statement. WWE is not unionized, but they do rely and depend on the regulations that are approved by the state that are accepting these regulations for the sport. That's what I was gonna say, but I literally said 45 seconds of gibberish. So I just saved y'all. Peace. I don't know what that means. Hopefully you do. Um, 11 states currently in the US don't regulate poor wrestling and more states section out wrestling boxing slash MMA in different regulation categories, right? Okay, now state to state regulations are common like fees for exams, uh, physical exams, media fees, and on-site EMTs and medical staff and inspection of, an inspection of clearance of the venue and props and wrestling rings and so forth, right? Now, WWE has all that, right? We know of this, we've seen it, we're not stupid. But a WWE contract for a wrestler states that WWE has no obligation, sorry, no obligation to provide any medical disabilities or workers' compensation or any other insurance or benefits generally offered to a regular WWE employee. Hmm. Also, WWE wrestler contracts state that the wrestler is responsible for their costumes, makeup, wardrobe, props, transportation, food, and lodging unless negotiated. Wow. So now like WTF, right? So we hear all these stories of wrestlers uh, that are getting taken care of by the company, meaning that their um, financial situations are helped out. They probably have some pension or some benefits. Surgeries are getting covered by the company, even though if they didn't wrestle for the company or get injured by the company. We know these things, right? WWE takes care of certain people, not everybody, but certain people. So what's all that shit talking about? Well, it's a gray line or gray word, meaning obligation. That means they could basically do whatever they want and they don't owe you shit. They could give you benefits and, so, and other things, but not the next 10 wrestlers because every contract is different. But new or entry level contracts into the company are generally all the same and could all be negotiated later within the years of uh, just being loyal to the company, popularity um, and merch sales, right? So would a union in WWE ensure that everybody gets fair treatment? Give me a hell yeah! Thank you, Steve. What? Don't start with me, Steve. Don't start. 
But most recently in the years, Selena Vega posted on Twitter, and I quote, I support unionization, end quote. Uh, then later she was released by WWE, but eventually she was rehired and there's an ongoing situation between them. There's a good background story, but I'm not going into that, in, not going into that within this episode, probably in a later episode uh, for maybe part two or part three. But in the past years, wrestlers such as Bret Hart, Rowdy Piper, Jesse Ventura, Sergeant Slaughter, Chris Jericho, and Sting. Sting! Damn Tony, not now, dude. Terry Funk, Goldberg, all publicly said they endorsed the idea of being under a union in pro wrestling. Now, Jesse Ventura went on Steve Austin's podcast what? and said that a, said a story that happened two weeks before WrestleMania at a board meeting with a bunch of agents that he brought up the idea of WWE being a union. Uh, but it was a strategy that he said would have an advantage for WWE because at that time, the territorial battle of the Carolinas was heating up, which was actually controlled by Jim Crockett and Jim Crockett Promotions. But WWE didn't agree with Jesse Ventura's idea of a union and thought that any company basically after the idea is heard could start a union and WWE will have no advantage. Only wrestlers will gain more control and more power and promoters and companies will lose power. So, yeah. But then later, Jesse eventually just dropped the idea of being of having a union because he was offered. Uh, well, he wasn't offered. He was accepted into a union because of his Hollywood roles in music, in movies, and Predator, and so and all these and other things. So he just thought maybe I don't need a pro wrestling union. He basically just left it like that. But eventually, he came back and started fighting for it in a couple of times. He had more attempts than just one, actually. But attempts now. Let's talk about attempts. Most attempts are led to wrestlers or agents being blackballed in history, meaning they would have sour names, not be able, not being able to get bookings, or being recognized by any major promotions, and having all their accomplishments stripped and basically not heard of in the record books, which is sucks. So the first major document surfaced between the 70s and 80s by a Georgia wrestler named Jim Wilson. Mr. Jim Wilson tried to regulate the sport of pro wrestling and place it in a union. This attempt led to him being blackballed by the NWA, which was basically in control and ran the Georgias and the Carolinas. Not the Georgias, just Georgia and the Carolinas. <laughs> but we all hear stories about wrestlers being lowballed on pay by promoters, cheated or being forced to wrestle injured, or wrestle in poor conditions such as the venue falling apart or unsafe rent wrestling rigs. We all know that. That's why regulating pro wrestling is important so common rules and laws are met to keep everyone safe physically and financially so back to the question of who is actually unionized mexico wrestlers in mexico have been unionized since the 1950s this protects wrestlers from wage theft by promoters and collects dues for pensions and so forth but in 1991, there was an appeal for a law that banned wrestling on television. And television at that point was the main source of income for wrestling companies, but later on sponsors and other things came into play. Mexico had over 20 live pro wrestling shows on a weekly basis, which is only second to football, American soccer. And then when the appeal happened, the wrestlers went on strike and the appeal was successful and the ban was lifted. After the strike though, the Mexican union scene went on a downward spiral which only left one union company, the SNL, as the sole union for professional wrestling in Mexico. Now, the CM CMLL Lucha Libre wrestlers are unionized under SNL, but this company is now being known for, such ha for having such high shares but not being able to pair the wrestlers their fair share. I don't know how that works out in the situation of the union and when the union comes into play or if this is actually working out or if CML is actually still on your union. This is what I just found out and there's no more to actually look into it, which I'm going to try to look into it for the next later episode. Let's slow down. Why don't companies want a union? Well, it's because they don't want to give up power to the regular workers, right? Nowadays, wrestlers are freelancers unless they're signed exclusively to a company. So, 
doing jobs for several companies on a regular basis without a union is actually deemed unsafe. Not my words, theirs, in the long run. So, back to the real question. Should pro wrestling be unionized? Now, I'm gonna change my answer because I'm old school, like the 80s old school, and I'm gonna say no, it shouldn't. Because, listen to me, a union is unnecessary. As long as the sport is actually regulated anywhere it is performed, it's actually safer for the promoter, like I said earlier, physically, or not just promoter, it's actually safe for the wrestler and promoters physically and financially. But a union, how much power does a wrestler actually need other than the point of control over scheduling, fair wages, and health and safety? Hmm. Honestly, think about it. I'm saying this as a spectator not a f and, and a fan, not actually as a wrestler, so I don't really know and my opinions don't actually matter. But I'm just saying that with a union into pay, the more strict laws come into pro wrestling, the less enjoyable it is for, I'm guessing, the wrestlers, the, the performers, and the fans too, right? Um, it's just like MMA. As soon as MMA came in with all these eight ounce gloves and or whatever, six ounce gloves, and, and, and no shots here and no shots there and this and that, and they started getting strict rules and made it actually safer for the the performers, yeah, but some performers didn't agree with it. Some some athletes didn't agree with it. Actually, most athletes didn't agree with it. But it was safer in the long run, right? But it, 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 at some point, the MMA scene went on a viewership downwards because of the regulations they had to follow, strict rules and stuff like that. And people thought it was no longer a fully contact sport now because of the gloves. Right? You can look this up. I'm not lying. I'm, I'm shooting off the top of my head because I didn't write this down. I'm actually just remembering. But yeah, you can look this up. MMA had a very high popularity when it first came out, like the UFC. But then when it was regulated, went down and boxing came back up. So yeah. Um, but like like I'm trying to say, um, we all know wrestling is a pre premeditated sport with the outcomes are determined but the action and the consequences are real and people do get injured and anything could go wrong inside the ring. So, with that being said, um, I don't know how a union could come into play to ensure all these things don't happen, but all I know is regulations could be more, more, more helpful into the situation, but a union will just take away more, more power from the sport, not just the promoter, but for the sport, because like I said, premeditated and it's determined but everything is real so i don't know how a union will be coming into play and make sure this is still the same sport or uh, profession that we all like right I, I really don't know to be honest it's very contradictory um all arguments on both sides have a fair argument and um only a wrestler and a promoter can be in this conversation um as spectators or fans or even anybody in a regular workplace environment has no say into this topic. It really doesn't matter. Um, you just have to be a wrestler or know what wrestling is to offer this subject. Here in Canada, I could say this, uh, and I wrote this down, it's a complicated section. Everything is very gray here in Canada. So. Uh, this is probably going to be on part two or part three, but in recent years, only the province of Ontario is regulated, was regulated for pro wrestling, but now they're trying to change that and now basically no province has a regulation for pro wrestling. Um, and there's a whole bunch of lists that I'm going to go through on next episode, but that's so far that's what I got. And honestly, the more that I look into this topic, it just makes me want to do this. Yikes. Um, <laughs> shit's scary. The more that you find out is the more you don't want to know. So hopefully part two makes sense and hopefully part two I don't come out strung out looking like a totally different person trying to run away from my country. <laughs> um, next couple episodes we will discuss about the Canada situation, about unionizing pro wrestling, and we'll be talking about a, uh, fan seating being pushed back and is it safe for fans and stuff like that. And if fans are actually safe for being, or fans are actually safe for wrestlers being so close to the ring, I don't think so. 
Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully I touched some topics and some situations you guys didn't know. And hopefully I informed you of some situations you guys did not know. Um, if you guys did enjoy this episode, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, you can give me a thumbs down, but that would be appreciated. Um, yes, but in the comments, please tell me what you guys think. Should pro wrestling be unionized? Um, if you guys have more information on the subject or on the topic, please let me know. Fill it in in the comments or hit me up on any other social media outlets. Until next time, guys, and until part two, peace. I'm Rich Michaels, and thank you so much. I really enjoyed doing this for you guys. But before I go, I just want to do this. We all know now that when this episode comes out, Jeff Hardy was just released by WWE. And we all know he has a substance abuse problem. But you know what? These two chains I have here support and represent totally two different things. You know, straight edge and being extreme. But because I love these two so much, I'm going to wear them. And they don't make sense. I don't know if you guys could see it. But it don't make sense. But I still got it. Peace. I'll see you next. Um, just a couple of days ago, I made this tweet um, in the background. I don't know if you guys could see it, wherever it is. Hopefully this green screen works with me. I made this tweet um, feeling kind of down and depressed, you know, just in my head. And the response I got from this amazing community of pro wrestling that I'm in or that we have is incredible like the response i had 186 total engagements and 19 different people from all across the world commenting and sending me dms of kind words and motivational phrases and basically just everything that i needed to gain the confidence and really motivate me to start this journey of becoming a pro wrestler and um it's just amazing i was overwhelmed um, I am just still on a high right now of messages and I'm still getting messages and comments about this. And I just want to say to everybody that commented, viewed, liked, or that has uh, came along with me on this journey, that has watched Wrestling on the Rise, that has commented or liked any of my posts, um, thank you to you and everyone in this wrestling community Pro wrestling is very therapeutic for me. It is basically that and two other things I will not announce on the show that really make me smile and make me happy in this world. And there's not much things that do that. Um, so thank you, everybody. I am truly grateful and appreciated and honored. And just, like I said, overwhelmed from the response and everybody and the treatment that I've been getting into this wrestling community. So thank you. And I'm here to tell you that currently right now, I'm in the process of starting the journey of becoming a pro wrestler. And in 2022, I will begin the process and I will step foot in a pro wrestling ring to become my, well, to start my pro wrestling training. So thank you again. And I appreciate it.